Hi, this is David from over at Simply Maya. Now I want to take this opportunity to continue our Getting Started with Maya 2020 series of tutorials by taking you through the principles of UV mapping. Now we're not going to be UV mapping anything complicated today. This is more an introduction to the topic and what you would use it for. Now UV mapping at its heart is basically taking a three-dimensional object and lying it flat along a two-dimensional plane. Now the reasons you'd want to do this are quite a few actually, but predominantly texturing. It's also useful in the area of dynamics, but we're going to be concentrating mainly on texturing today. So if we take a 3D object like a cube, and we wanted to lay this flat to say paint a texture across the top of it, it's not possible. Any way we stretch or bend this, it will never be flat to the point where I could see all of it from a two-dimensional viewport. So if I look at it from the top, I can only actually see the top. And if I look at it from the side, obviously I can only see the side. Now in 3D space, that's fine. In 2D space, that's not going to work. I'm going to need an object that has been split apart and laid on the floor. So let's flip in to the UV workspace here. So the UV edit in workspace, and we'll take a look at what Maya has done with the UV of this box. Now you'll notice me moving around the 3D object won't actually affect the UV. But let's look at our box in the viewport for a start. Now I've got the textured display on. And what you're looking for a good UV is to have perfectly square boxes. One thing to note, however, if I select the UV shell here and rotate it, it doesn't really matter which direction these boxes are facing. You're just looking to make sure that they are perfectly square. So how is this done? Well, if we select a face here, you can see that each one of these is one face of our box. Where these white outlines are, let me turn off the textured view, is where the seams Oh, it's where the box has been cut in order to lay it flat. Now you might be thinking that you could just take a more complicated object and then chop it into tiny pieces and lay it flat on the floor. And this would indeed be true. But everywhere you have one of these seams can be a problem to texture because although modern uh, painting programs for this kind of thing like Mari and Substance can paint across seams, you're still going to have an issue with things like procedural texturing, dirt generation in a lot of cases and things like this. So the object of a good UV is to get the object as flat as possible without too many seams. Now on a cube, this is quite easy because each face is just flattened to the floor. But if we were to bring in, let's say, something a little more challenging, like a sphere here, you can see Maya has done its standard UV map for us. It looks all right. It's square. It's flat. However, if we put a checker on it, you can see that these are not square. They're oblong. And as we go further up, the situation gets worse and worse and worse. So if I were to just take this into a paint program now and paint on it, I'd end up with a very distorted texture. In fact, we can see that if we turn on the distortion view. So anything in blue here is going to be squashed as a texture, and anything in red is going to be expanded as a texture. Now, let's say I was painting a lizard skin or something like this, where a little bit of squash and, uh, squash and stretch might look natural, then obviously I can get away with less seams. Because the more seams I cut in, the flatter the object's going to be, but the more difficult it can end up being to texture. So it's always a bit of a struggle depending on what you're UVing as seams versus uh, versus flatness, basically. So as you can tell when we've got this view on, all of the top and bottom of our object is pinched together and the outside of our object is expanded outwards. Now we can do a much better job than this. So I'm going to go into the UV view here. I am going to select UV. I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to get rid of everything Maya's done by just hitting so. Now you'll see I've made the problem much worse, but that's fine. This is a base for us to start with. Now we would need to decide where to cut this object in order to lay it flat. Now, as I said before, we can't just squash it flat. We need all of it represented in a 2D flat plane. 
So a traditional way to UV a cube like this would be to select the edges. Now you can select the edges on the UV map itself or on 3D viewport here, whichever you're most comfortable with. I'm going to use the 3D viewport for a second because I think it might be easier uh, for you to visualize it. So we're going to cut this top of the square or uh, cube, uh, cube, cut the top of the sphere off, sorry, and I'm going to hold shift and I'm going to select this line down here. I'm going to go into the UV toolkit under cut and sew and I'm going to hit cut. Now you'll see these lines have thickened up and if we go back to object mode you'll see I've got two white lines there for the cuts. Now I've also made three UV shells now. So I can come along in here and move these apart a minute so you can see they're three separate shells and then I can flatten these out. So if you go here and you go to unfold you're going to unfold this one and unfold this one. Now this is not going to be perfectly flat because if you envision this shape in your mind if you flatten it it's going to be stretched a bit. You would need to cut it again. So let's look at that. Let's bring out our view here and I'm going to put this down here and make it a little smaller so we get bigger squares and you can see that we've got pretty square squares here but it's not perfect and we'll be able to see that even more if we bring on the distortion view. You can see around the bottom, ignore this bit in the middle because we'll work on that in a minute, but around the bottom of our shell it's quite red. Now this to me would be fine but if you needed this thing completely flat there's a way to do that too and that's by adding extra seams. Okay, so let's just put a couple of extra seams in this. Now it's worth noting as we zoom in on this map here, you can see very little in the way of distortion on it. There might be a slight redness here and possibly, let me just turn the UV shell off, a slight blueness here. Now this is a more than adequate UV, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you how you could maybe get it a little flatter still. So I'm going to do a cut around the circle to cut the middle out and a cut around uh, down here. And I'm going to get a cut and then I'm going to go to unfold. And if we take this UV shell and unfold it and this UV shell and unfold it, you'll see now that we're almost perfectly bright white. Okay, so this is flat, but at the expense of extra seams to make it more difficult for me to paint. So again, you have to ask yourself the question, is that tiny amount of stretching on your UV really worth it? For me, the answer in this case would be no, but I thought I'd just demonstrate to you how you would cut it so it was a little bit flatter. Now let's do all the rest of our objects. So what have we got here? We've got the same thing here, UV shell, make sure we unfold it and that's fine. We'll deal with the size discrepancy in a moment and then we have this big thing. Now if we try and unfold that it'll unfold into a circle, not very good, um, very very pinched at the edges and very very squashed, sorry very squashed or pinched at the edges and very expanded up here. So we would need to cut another seam in this and I'm going to go to cut and then UV shell and unfold and that will unfold it. Okay, you can see now that it still has some of that blue and red on it, but so little it's really not going to make any difference. And in fact, if I lay this out, so let's deal with both the sizing issue and the layout of the UV. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to go layout and that's going to pop that all together for me all nicely. Now, when it comes to UVing, one of these squares, the ones in uh, dark black, uh, bold dark black lines, is one UDIM, one UV tile, if you like. So this could be practically any size you wanted. It could be 1K by 1K for a texture size or 8K by 8K. Now, there are other UDIMs you can also use, which are supported by modern texture painters like Mari and uh, Substance and whatnot. But for right now, I don't want to get into that. Just be aware that when you lay a UV out, it's pretty much all going to fit within one of these boxes or a selection of these boxes. But what you don't want pretty much ever is one of these UV shells to bisect two boxes. 
So you can use multiple boxes, but not for the same shell. So for instance, I could have this in this patch and this in this one, in this UDIM and this in this one, and that would be fine. But having this one straight across the middle or even worse, straight across all four, pretty much a no-no. If you select them all and hit layout, that will move them all into the zero and one space, which is this box here. So now we've got this done and it's three separate patches, which is kind of fine, but can be a bit of a pain when you start UV in a complex scene and you've got bits all over the shop. So we can actually join these things back together. So let's go to edge here. I'm going to select this edge and hit stitch together, which will stitch it up here. I'm then going to select the corresponding edge on the other side and hit stitch together, which will stitch that one out there. I'm then going to lay it out again just so it fits neatly in the box, and there we go. Now it's worth noting as well that the more you can maximize this space, the more texture you're gonna to have to paint on. So if you imagine this as a image in Photoshop, only where this UV is will you be able to paint. So you're wasting all of this space. Now in modern terms, that's not such an issue anymore, because like I say, this could be a 8K texture, so you have plenty of space, and you can also move other UV parts into another one of these UDIM patches to give yourself two 8K textures. So the days of really having to optimize the UV layout inside these boxes, while not gone, it's certainly a bit more relaxed. Like I would not try and, uh, it used to be back in the day that people would actually stretch a UV out to try and get it to fit and you'd end up with these weird sort of stretched UVs so people could get them to fit a bit more. Now, of course, the UV would then be more stretched, but, you know, uh, many, many moons ago, it was considered a fair price to pay to have a bit of stretching to maximize this space. It's not strictly that necessary anymore, although you should definitely pay attention to it. You do not want to do something like this and then hand it off to the guy that's texturing your work because he'll have, you know, 20 by 20 pixels to paint on. So you definitely want to get that maximized to as much space as you can. Okay, so a couple of takeaways here are just basically UVing is laying something flat that's three-dimensional. So from a three-dimensional object to a two-dimensional object. It's also a trade-off between the number of seams or the number of cuts you put in an object and how flat it can be versus the number of cuts and how easy it is to paint and manage in general. Like I say, we could actually just come in here, cut out each face individually, and they'd be perfectly flat. But it would also be quite a nightmare to paint or texture later on. So let's just quickly do one more object. And as I say, this is more like principles of UV mapping than an actual tutorial on uh, you know, exactly what each button does, but I'm kind of hoping you're finding this useful because I know it's an area where quite a few people have some issues. So I'm going to give you a couple more tips here. I don't know why I got that bit left behind. So I'm going to bring in a polytorus here because it's an interesting thing to cut. And you can see on the viewport where Maya has cut it. So let's get rid of that nonsense. Although Maya hasn't actually done quite a bad job on this one. And I'm just going to sew it together. So we don't have any cuts on it, just for demonstration purposes, really. I'm then going to take the edge here. So I'm going to cut the top off this thing. Now, if I think about the best way to cut this, there's actually quite a number of ways to cut a torus up. I'm going to do one that's going to be pretty flat, but has a few seams on it. Now, this isn't necessarily the best way to do it, or indeed the only way to do it. This is just um, the way I'm going to do it to get it pretty flat. So I'm going to cut across all these, and then that will leave me with a number of UV shells here. So it should be four. Okay, and you can see the viewport update. So this big one is actually the inner shell here, and then we have one shell here, one shell here, and one shell here. Now what we need is to cut all of these, because if we try and unfold them at the moment, they will unfold as circles. Um, which generally is not the best use of space, but also it won't be the best for laying the texture flat either. If I come in and put on the, um, I seem to have lost the icon, the textured view, you'll see 
that if I make this a little smaller to increase the size of the squares, that they're not really square. You've got quite a bit of stretching. Now, you're never going to be able to get rid of that. That's a curved surface, and laying a curved surface flat would, again, mean chopping it into much smaller pieces. But that's what I would consider an acceptable level of distortion. So let's come in here. Now, I haven't unfolded these yet, which is why we still have a nasty display. Let's come in here, hit the edge, and I would recommend, by the way, use F8, F9, F10, and F11 for edge, vertex, face, and object. Um, I can't use them at the moment because my recording hotkeys, for some reason, won't change off F9 and F10 to pause and stop the video, which is why you keep seeing me going to edge, object, vertex, and whatnot. But F8, F9, F10, F11, excellent short keys to shortcut keys to memorize. So I've got this whole edge selected here, and you'll see that actually selects the corresponding edges on all these UV shells. And I'm going to go to cut, and then I'm going to select all of the UV shells and unfold them. Okay, and I end up with this. Now I can grab them all and get a layout that will put them all to their approximate sizes and because i don't want a situation where i have lots of uv shells hanging around i'm just going to quickly stitch these guys back together so let's select the edge here you can see the corresponding edge selected here and let's stitch together and then I'm going to select the opposite edge and stitch together now this guy would actually go around the inside of here so this edge actually would line up with these ones. Now, obviously, we can't jam this in here. It would just be very, very distorted. Now, we can't connect the other end to anything because the other end actually connects to itself, as you can see on the display here. So this one, unfortunately, would be difficult to join back together with this one. So this side would go here. This side would go here. So in this case, there's not really a lot you can do about it. You can just get it organized into a decent position, like so. I'm not going to take too much time of it because this is not the world's most interesting subject. I'm going to hit the layout button again. There we go. And that's what Maya thinks its layout should be. Me, I want to keep these together to remind me that they're all one object. So we haven't made the best use of the space. Again, that would be something where perhaps you would want another seam. So not only will the seams help you to lay it flat, they'll also help you to manage your space. As I said, not such a big deal this uh, not such a big deal at this point, but if we wanted to optimize this, oops, didn't want the four view there. If we wanted to optimize this for space requirements, how could we do it? Well, we can cut here and here. Just I'm going to separate these shells again. And then I am going to match this guy up here, stitch together and stitch together. Now, this is going to be a more efficient use of our space if we cut this out. Cut. So I'm actually introducing one more seam here. But when I select all of these guys and hit layout, you'll see it's a much more efficient use of our space. Now, I can actually do a better job than Maya of the layout of this thing. Uh, manual layout is a thing. And even though, as I said, you do have more options available to you, bigger textures and whatnot, that's no need to be extremely sloppy. Now, we don't want it outside the bounds of this. So there we go. That's maximized my texture space a little. And let's see what that looks like when it's got a checker box on it. OK, our squares are pretty square, but we do have those extra seams. So again, the eternal struggle of the UV mapper of whether to have more seams and less stretching or more stretching and less seams. Now, that's a question you're going to have to answer for yourself, depending on the model and your circumstances. And this has only touched upon the very basics of UVing, um, some of the first principles of taking three-dimensional objects and trying to lay them flat on a two-dimensional plane. 
So I hope this has been some use to you. I hope it's helped you get your head around exactly what UVing is. If you're after more complicated UVing tutorials, uh, I'm going to do a shameless plug right now. We have some subscriber content on simplymaya.com that you can go along and look at those, some sort of faster UV mapping techniques for more complicated objects. But I hope this is at least enough to get you started with, and I hope you're all doing okay as the world's a little nuts right now, as we all know. So stay safe, stay inside, and I'll see you in another video tomorrow, probably. Thanks for watching.